Whoa! My name's Daryl Hutchinson, and I'm a field biologist. I study the golden cheek warbler here at Wild Basin. Now, the golden cheek warbler is a small migratory songbird. It spends most of the year in Central and South America, and it eats insects there. However, here in Central Texas during the summer, there's an explosion of insects that are very, very easy to eat, very abundant for the bird to find, and easy for it to get. In order to survive, all animals need space, food, shelter, and water. Now this is a golden cheek warbler's nest. It's quite small, and it's usually placed up in the crotch of a tree, oftentimes in the ash juniper. Now, the outside of the nest is built from the bark of an ash juniper tree. What the bird will do is the female will peel the bark off an ash juniper tree and then fold it and mold it to be part of the nest. All animals also need food. Golden cheek warblers eat insects. One of their favorite insects is the caterpillars from all the many, many butterflies and moths that live in central Texas. And this tree is called the Texas red oak. So the golden cheek warbler will come to the Texas red oak and forage for the caterpillars that it finds on the red oak. And that's the favorite food of the golden cheek warbler. All animals, including the golden cheek warbler, needs space. This is the space of the golden cheek warbler. This is oak juniper woodland. And this particular type of oak juniper woodland only exists in central Texas. Uh, the golden cheek warbler is an endangered songbird. The reason is there's, there really just isn't very many of them. So the threats to the golden cheek warbler are really quite simply habitat lost and fragmentation. Fragmentation is when people have a subdivision and then have a road and then a bridge and then all this stuff, there's always patches of habitat, but they need lots of adjacent habitat because of course they need to have neighbors. There has to be a population of golden cheek warblers for golden cheek warblers as a whole to survive. And they prefer large areas of forest. And as that gets broken up, we begin to see effects on the golden cheek warbler. One of the things that fragmentation does is it interferes with the connectivity between the birds themselves, but it also introduces predators generally. So in areas that have big chunks of habitat, you see less of those pressures. When you see areas that are fragmented into little pieces, often you see more of those pressures. 